Neural network models are composed of simple neuron-like processing units, which can adopt activation values that range from 0 to 1. The activations are analogous in some respects to the mean firing rate across a population of neurons. Each unit receives signals from other units in the network by means of weighted synapse-like connections. And each unit also transmits information about its state to other units in the network by means of weighted connections. The connection weights can be excitatory, so that activation in the sending unit promotes increased activation in the receiving unit. Or they can be inhibitory, so that increased activation in the sending unit promotes deactivation of the receiving unit. The weights can also vary in the strength of their effects. Each unit thus computes a simple function. Across the sending units, it adds up the activation of the unit multiplied by the value of the interconnecting weight plus a constant bias term to get a total net input. It then adjusts its own activation in response to the net input, with positive inputs pushing the activation toward 1 and negative inputs pushing the activation toward 0. In a neural network model, collections of units are wired together in the manner stipulated by the hypothesis under investigation. In this case, the model implements the semantic hub hypothesis. Visual representations of objects and representations of verbal statements about objects interact with one another by a common set of hub units which serve as a model analog of the anterior temporal lobe. A computer program is then used to simulate how patterns of activation will flow through such a network given this pattern of connectivity and specific values for the interconnecting weights. Initially, the weights are set to small random values, but as the network processes different patterns, the weight values are adjusted to encode associations amongst words and images that occur in the model environment. Here's what the model looks like in the software interface. Each small rectangle stands for a single model unit. Units down the left individually represent familiar words, including the names of objects and also other words that we might use to describe them. Units in the top right encode visually perceived features of objects so that the visual appearance of an object is coded with a pattern of activation over these units. Wherever an arrow appears, this indicates that all of the units in the originating layer send weighted connections to all of the units in the receiving layer. In this case, all of the word and image units send connections to and receive connections from the hub layer, as proposed by the hypothesis. Here we see model behavior in the early phases of learning. Each unit is split in half, with the left side showing the activation generated by different inputs and the right half showing the target activations, the patterns that should be generated if the model is performing correctly. You can see that with each input, activation spreads weakly throughout the network and quickly dies away. The model never generates the correct response. With each presentation, however, the interconnecting weights are adjusted by tiny amounts to make the generated pattern just a little bit more similar to the desired pattern. Here we see model behavior later in learning. After extensive learning experience, the model can eventually generate the correct patterns across all word and image units in response to any kind of input. Given a name, it can generate a correct verbal description or a visual image. Given an image, it can generate a name or a verbal description. And given a verbal description, it can generate a name or an image. In this sense, the model embodies Wernicke's basic proposal that knowledge about meanings of words and objects can arise from learned associations amongst different kinds of representations, in this case, representations of words and images. However, the associations themselves are encoded within a single cross-modal hub. The trained model can then be used to simulate behavior on many of the tasks that we use to assess semantic knowledge in patients with knowledge impairments. To simulate picture naming, for instance, we provide the model with an image. Specifically, we directly activate the visual properties that correspond to the familiar item. We then allow activation to propagate all through the network and inspect the activation that emerges across the name units. In this case, the model has activated a single unit 
corresponding to the name sheep. So we count this as a success. The model has named the image as a sheep. To simulate naming of a different item, let's say this eagle, we simply input a different activation pattern over the visual units corresponding to the learned pattern for eagle. We allow activation to propagate throughout the network and inspect the activation over the name units. Here, the model has produced the word eagle. And here, it produces the word iron. Of course, we don't need to only test it on naming. We can also assess the model's ability to comprehend spoken words simply by providing direct input to the single name unit corresponding to a familiar item. Again, we allow activity to propagate throughout the network and now we inspect the pattern that arises over the visual units. In this case, the model generates the same pattern that it's learned to represent the visual appearance of an eagle. And here's the model comprehending the word iron. Again, it generates the visual pattern corresponding to the iron in this model training environment.